Now today, we should be seeing an image in front of us that is a square in the ground somewhere on the Isles of Scilly. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. We should be Scilly. Oh, oh, right. Okay. Right. I do the jokes, right? I know you assume it's silly, right? I'm yeah. telling you it's silly. <laughs> so, so introduction to everybody else. This is this is my gang on a Tuesday evening. They're mainly all odd, but I can't say any different about you guys either. So, what we're going to do is, you can clearly see it's on an island or somewhere because that's the sea, and that's an island, and that's an island. Okay. You happy? Mm. Good. Yes. I can just about see them, yeah. I, 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 I'm really pleased. I'm really happy that, <laughs> you know, I, I'm, I'm overjoyed. <laughs> I really am. Hard work or what? <laughs> so, are you still seeing that? Hopefully you are now. Yeah. I've been, I've been visiting a lot of places recently. Last week we did Mongolia. And one thing I said about Mongolia is that even though there are major finds made in Mongolia, you really don't hear about Mongolian archaeology. So when you go to the Scilly Isles, you don't hear about the Scilly Islands either. You, you occasionally hear about Guernsey, Alderney, Sark or Jersey, but that's nowhere near the Scilly Islands. You don't really, it, to be honest with you, you don't hear much about the islands of Britain in the local, in, in the national media. You do hear about Orkney, but not the islands that we've actually got. So headline news, 10th of the sixth month, 2014, Neolithic finds unearthed at Scilly Island site. Now, bit by bit, we show you where all these places are. Archaeologists have, have discovered one of the largest halls of Neolithic pottery in the Southwest even more than we find when we look at Cornwall. But the Isles of Ceylon reminded our part of Cornwall. But um, knowing what I know of people on islands, they would probably say, no, we're nothing to do with Cornwall or Britain. We're completely independent. I've never been to the Scilly, Scilly Islands. I'm told it's a beautiful place. It's great for wreck diving. There's actually, if you go back a thousand years, I, I'm, I'm guessing, fingers fingers crossed, that the Scilly Islands was twice the size that it is today. Now, there are a few nice little facts that I'd like to tell you about in, in regards to global change and water levels. And we've got a couple of graphs and little maps and different things like that. So it, it sort of keeps us to the Scilly Islands. But when I've never looked at the Scilly Islands before, um, it's likely that I would say maybe one or two of you have been to the Scilly Islands, but the rest of us haven't. Knowing, knowing Pete, he's not been to the Scilly Islands either. It seems that he lived he lived in Cornwall, but he hasn't been many places in Cornwall. Sorry, Pete, I'm just having a go. Thousands of pottery shards were found at this site. Again, it's like reading a newspaper and thinking, where are the Scilly Islands, right? So I'm actually giving you those details. So you're reading this press re report. So 6,500 years, ago we've got pottery on the Scilly Islands. Now, it, the work the work on the Scilly Islands undertaken by Southampton University and the pottery there, dating as far back as the Neolithic and into the Bronze Age is described as a sig significant and an intriguing site. So they've, the, the, the excavations that they've undertaken, eight huge excavation areas. The, the trench in front of us is 10 by 12 meters. And you can see post holes, which might be relating to a succession of different structures on the Scilly Islands. Mm. And so sometimes it's very difficult to work out buildings from a number of post holes. And thousands of pottery shards and flint. And in one single pit, yielding thick layers of charcoal, about which we are not sure. So... Um, Sometimes you, you, you find articles like this is a bit vague and it's still too vague in this seminar today. So containing material, rock crystals, pierced pebble, necklace and amulet. Now, also in regards to artifacts, so if we change the image, sort of move on a little bit. 
look at that. Now, this mentioning the name that we shall not mention today, Cornwall, they actually found this wonderful Neolithic axe. It's known as, it's described as a Neolithic axe of nice Cornish green stone. It's a mace axe, which would probably be more ceremonial because it would be very difficult to cut down a tree with something like this. It's Neolithic, 6,000 years ago, but again, that date 6,000 years ago is very interesting because if you push that date a bit further back, you've almost got a land bridge with mainland Cornwall. So as we discussed earlier on today, the people who were indigenous to the Isles of Scilly would have come via the land bridge from Cornwall in the first place. But there are rather interesting things. We've we got lots of bits of history in regards to the Scilly Islands. And we also mentioned the Romans today. Do you know what? I haven't mentioned the Romans in months. It's very difficult to mention the Romans when you're looking in Mongolia or Aboriginal Australia, <laughs> isn't it? You know, <laughs> so, so something like this, this wonderful mace head would have taken hours of work naturally. And a, a wooden bow drill with, with abrasive sand. So you've got back, 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 abrasive sand on the surface. Eventually you're creating a hole through the stone. A mace head, a prestigious object, probably never ever used for anything other than show, really. And with this introduction to the Scilly Islands, this is literally a fragment. The land of the Scilly Islands is a fragment of the prehistoric archaeology that once existed because probably two thirds of Neolithic and earlier archaeology is now submerged. And all that's left now is the islands that create the upland areas of what was once a, a, a large sort of nugget of archaeology. A, a nuggety landscape. I'm not saying it was as the, the landmass would have been as large as Anglesey, but it was a substantial area. But bit by bit, the landscape's been extensively flooded. Now, there I go. I think, right, where do I go next with this today? And I'm thinking, well, to explain a few things, what I need to do is I need to introduce why we've got so much land archaeology under the water. So, and I just thought, well, where could I get that information? And I just thought, well, what I what I probably do need to do is look around, put a couple of maps on, and I need to look far south in the Scilly Islands. We see an even more dramatic change as the land sinks down. During the Bronze Age, when many of the prehistoric monuments were being built, there was basically a single large island. So if I say... Bronze Age actually isn't as far ago as the Neolithic period. So when I was looking at this, I thought, right, 12,000 years ago, Scilly Islands, there was a land bridge. 6,000 years ago, 7,000 years ago, it's, it's, it's probably all relatively one big island. And there's a lot more land. And still in the Bronze Age, it's relatively one big island. Whereas the water sort of comes in and takes a little bit of land away. This is... This is the changes that we're looking at. So let's look at a few nice maps. They, anyone that likes a good map like me can't go too far wrong. So these types of monuments, this we'll look at this monument in a little bit more detail. Mystery, where is it? But we'll look at this at the end. And there's lots of barrows and there's lots of cons. And there it is. So what, what we've got, we've got this wonderful Cornwall and we've got the Scilly Islands and you can see Bronze Age that would have been one big island and it's talking about elevation so this, this isn't really helpful to me but it, what it does show is that it's it's a big nugget it, it's it's almost as big as the area of the pen, peninsula in Penzance that's the type of area that we're talking about which as Pete and, and others know Cornwall is chock-a-block of its prehistory. And this landscape, chock-a-block of its prehistory. Again, a mystery for the end with this site. And it, looking out there, looking out, 
when this monument was constructed 6,000 years ago, you could walk across that blue stuff to the other side. It was all one, one sort of landscape. And admiralty charts. Now you can't go too far wrong with the admiralty charts. So if we zoom in a little bit more, don't often look at wonderful admiralty charts like this. And what you can see is you can see that all these blue areas, then it's it basically, they're only a few meters. It's only a few meters before you get to rock bottom. And then it starts to go out and it starts to get out into the sound and it gets deeper and deeper. And then it starts to get over to more of these islands. So all of this being one big island at one stage, sort of demonstrated by the Admiralty chart here. And it's, it's, mm. it's, in, it's in these blue areas that you that archaeologists find walls and all sorts of wonderful things. It, it's, it's a, it's, when we've mentioned the likes of, likes of Orkney and we look at the Ness of Bodga and they're excavating at the Ness of Bodga, Orkney is also an island, as we know. And mainland Orkney itself, within the water around the Nessa Bodga, there's walls, standing stones and sort of settlements. And this is exactly what we're talking about in regards to the Isles of Scilly. It's say it's sinking, rather interesting. We'll, we'll look at a little bit of a graph that, that sort of says that a little bit more. But naturally, like, like the Bay of Mol Molban in France in relation to um, Karnak, where you've got this bay that lots of sites are actually under the water. This is very, very similar. A mystery, mysterious um, chamber of a monument that we'll look at towards the end. Wonderful aerial view. And in a way, if you can squint your eyes, you can almost see the land that linked all these islands. Mm. There's over a hundred islands in this archipelago. And there's lots of bits of archaeology associated with many of these islands. And one thing I'll just chuck in there that that a thousand years ago was actually together. Those two bits, only a thousand years ago, those two bits of land were actually together. So you go back a little bit further, more of the land is together, you go back a bit further and it's all together. Sort of if we could just show you that there and look at the archaeological sites. Now, that's interesting because what they're doing, you can actually clearly see the yellow represents Bronze Age sites that we know about. That's, a, that's one. And the red represents Iron Age sites. So just going to leave that in front of you. I want to read a bit more of my text and we'll come back to that in a moment. Let's just see, let's just see what my text tells me. So we're talking about the Scilly Islands now. The Scilly Islands is sinking according to this. And during the Bronze Age, when many of the prehistoric monuments were being built, there was basically a large single island. Around that, especially to the west, there were a few scattered outposts, including what we now call St. Agnes, Annette, and the Western Island. So in other words, you've got the Central Islands, you've got the Western Islands, and you've got the Eastern Islands of Scilly. It's a lot more complicated than just a couple of islands with a few wrecks on them. And to be honest with you, I only mentioned the word wreck in, in one little image today. Don't, didn't really do wrecks. Unlike many subjects, when I take on a subject, actually, I'll give you a little bit of a con, um, confession, right? Secret. When I take on a subject, I thought, like Karnak, I could do it in one session. No way. The, the Aboriginal archaeology of, of Australia thought I could do it in one session. No way. And the Isles of Scilly, have I done this site? Have I done that site? Have I done this site? No, I haven't. I haven't done many because it was such a big topic. The whole of the central area between uh, uh, of the Western Island Isles and the, the cent Central Isles and Eastern Islands is now submerged, um, in which quite large vessels can anchor if they find the deep patches, which would have been back in the, in the day 7,000 years ago, just pools in those deep patches and all the rest of it was all linked. Uh, there was a fertile plain supporting crops and animals. And all that has now gone, perhaps spawning tales of Atlantis. But it's, it's passing as 
has been recorded in history? Well, actually, because it's lots of the gaps between the islands as you see them today have been lost, not so much in living memory, have been, but lost within historical memory. A thousand years ago isn't a long time. Well, in, in geology, it's not even time. It's just like, it just happened. In archeology span a thousand years ago, to some people, when I look at a prehistory, isn't a long time ago at all, but a lot has happened. But if we think about major changes with the islands of Scilly, the changes with the islands of Scilly have been catastrophic and major in regards to the past thousand years. If you want to compare that with something like Orkney, yeah, bits of land have been lost around the Orkney coastline. I will give you that. But for major changes with Orkney, you've got to probably look over the, the past three, four, five thousand years, if not six thousand years ago. So the dramatic nature of of, of the Scilly Islands is, is in is in historical written records. I've got a wonderful image in front of me, which I'm not seeing. So cut this a minute. Let's just look at my images again. Back to this, back to this wonderful image. Now, what we can see is if we if mm. we go with, you can see all these yellow bits, these are Bronze Age. So these Bronze Age bits of archeology span go back as far as four and a half thousand years ago. It's not showing you that um, the Neolithic stuff, which is a bit of a shame really. I'd like to have seen something with the Neolithic stuff on. But what you can see is that some Bronze Age sites have been found there. There's not even an island. Bronze Age sites there, not an island. You, you get lots of other Bronze Age sites. There's another one there. So some of the Bronze Age sites that once existed on land have now been found underwater. Right. So one thing in the Bronze Age, at the early Bronze Age, four and a half thousand years ago, they get the Bronze Age a little bit earlier than we do on mainland Britain. Our Bronze Age is more like 4,100 years ago. Their, their Bronze Age is a little bit earlier. But one thing that you can clearly see, see about the yellow is that there are more sites inland in the Bronze Age in the, on the Scilly Islands than, for example, there were in the Iron Age. So lots of sites inland in the Bronze Age are very, well, actually, I'm struggling to actually see one Iron Age site which is inland. And it's probably because from the Neolithic period to the Bronze Age, most of the trees have been cut down. Mm. And it's likely by the Iron Age, when the Iron Age comes about 700 years BC, which is, which is about the age for the Iron Age across the whole of Britain. When the Iron Age comes in, it's too bleak, it's too exposed in, in the middle of these in the middle of these sort of hill-like terrains because still most of this is still one island. So people in the Iron Age are living along the margins of the islands, which have probably got access to water um, of, 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 of or inland waterways. I, I've actually seen um, an image with inland waterways and all those inland waterways in regards to the submerged area are now gone. There is now all underwater. So again, moving on. So when when we did this with Mike today, he said, well, how did you how did people get to the Scilly Islands initially? I, I want to see something. And and it's quite likely if we if we go from right to left so you read right to left so so what we're talking about is around i'm going to change the dates a little bit on this because it would make a bit more sense so this is basically what europe sort of looked like twelve thousand years ago and seeing as that's in german i think i think that actually says ten thousand years bc so twelve thousand years ago that makes sense so what we've got is is this sort of this sort of yellowy area is is probably this this hang on a bit get this plumbing thing off this yellowy area is is still probably land it's probably a bit boggy but it's still land you could walk over to the silly islands right with with a bit of problem but and we're talking not twelve thousand years ago we're talking about 
um, 10,000, 9,000 years ago. But probably somewhere around 8,000 years ago, which is when Doggerland was lost and we became an island about eight and a half, 8,000 years ago, is probably that the land bridge between Cornwall and the Scilly Islands was completely lost or anything of an assemblage of a land bridge. It probably went before that. So any of the peoples that are actually on the islands of Scilly would have got there before that point. And I'm told that the water, water, water is going to be very, is very treacherous today. And that's why lots of wrecks have been, that's why lots of ships have been lost on the Cornish coastline and on the Scilly Islands because of the stormy sea between the two. And the, the, the thing is, it, it would have been very treacherous to have got to the Scilly Islands 6,000 years ago. And it's probably that large populations, they would have got there before that. And it makes sense, actually, because lowland, lowland England, Cornwall, would have been very pleasant places to have lived back 8,000 years ago. So going to the Scilly Islands with nothing. But by 6,000 years ago, things were starting to change. Water levels were rising quite rapidly. And we're looking at probably water level has risen between the Cornish, between Land's End and the Scilly Islands by about 100 metres. That's how much water level has risen. Or water level risen, Scilly's, Scilly Islands have dropped. Follow that one. You sometimes hear England sinking and Scotland rising. Why? Well, I'm just going to look at that. Oh, that's what I want to go to. Oh, that's what I want to get to. Really, I'd really want to get there. So before we actually get to these wonderful, nice images of walls, Bronze Age, maybe Neolithic walls, let's look at this. Now, I like this because... So sort of talking in the Neolithic period, all this is one island, Bronze Age, bits of islands are starting to occur in the West. So the green stuff here, it reads fertile plain, field walls, houses and graves. So this is where all the activity is going. And this is where all the activity is going on as well, because this is going to be closer to the sea. Because this is on the lowland, because the islands, which you now refer to the islands as the hills. So obviously at the beginning of the Bronze Age, you're still looking at trees, but they're being cut down. And so obviously, but in the Iron Age, you've got the inland areas quite bereft. So just, just a, few, a few mentions. So if we get the little cursor in, so places, that's the uh, Western Islands, the Western Isles of the Scillies. These are the Eastern Isles of the Scilly. There's over a hundred islands and you've got Tresco and Brithe, or Brehe. And you've got an island known as Samson, but not Samson, as in Peter Samson. Because he's not going to take, he can't say he's named after this because he's not. Samson okay. of Dole, he, he was uh, purportedly a saint. And you've got St. Mary's Island, which is quite a big chunky island. Um, and you've got St. Martin's Island as well. So those are the ones that we're just going to talk about. And, and St. Agnes as well. That, that would have been all, all this would have been one big island at one stage. So we're going into the Bronze Age. And you're looking, you're looking at that, another sort of admiralty chart, and you're actually starting to see that, you know, it's, it's possible if you follow this chain of white with the higher raised areas to have actually got, and we're, we're talking about some of this is a maximum of five fathoms, um, sometimes lower, and that would have been accessible 10,000 years ago. Exploration of a ground landscape. There you go. So even now low tide allows careful explore, explorers to go well beyond the shoreline, disturbing herons 
and other wading birds browsing, browsing. What has been left in the seaweed and rock pools? You pass by the remains of stone walls, which presumably served as boundaries or boundary markers, but are now submerged much of the time. At especially low spring and autumn tides, tall people can still cross between most of the islands without swimming, so long as you know where the sandbars and shallow patches are. Um, so if, you, if you're about seven foot, you can walk amongst the islands, apparently. I don't mm. know if that's true, but it might be. It, it might be. Now, what I want to do is, is actually, to give you an idea of the dramatic change, we need to, to actually go back to one of the other plans, actually. So if we go to, so, put a hair and Tresco, I call it put in hair, didn't I? Put a hair and Tresco, these two islands here. Now the next bit is about that. So I'm gonna leave that there for you a minute. So, thank you, my tea's arrived and Michelle is the most amazing woman in the world. She is for me anyway. As well as simply projecting backwards, the change in sea level at a rate of 30 centimeters per century, it said, 30 centimeters per century water is rising or the silly islands are sinking, depending on which way you want to look at it. We can look back at history. We know that in the year 1127, 900 years ago, Tresco and Brahir were still a single island with the two names referring simply to internal parish divisions. By 1600, they were separate and the Grimsby Sound between them had become a sheltered haven for ships. The transition did not take many generations and you have to wonder what the occupants made of the stories of their ancestors. This was all one island. You could, you could walk to mainland Cornwall, you know, that type of thing. Obviously that's thousands of years earlier. Mm -hmm. But you can imagine the stories that these people, you know, they were once part of our island. We, we, we were all one island, they would say. The central area between St. Mary's and the northern cluster of islands probably flooded around 700 years AD. So yeah, you got you got Saint you got Saint Mary's. You're looking on that now, Saint Mary's, and Tresco. That all that was one island. On the other side of the country, ship ship burials were happening at Sutton Hoot. To give you an idea, by around 600 700 years AD, our land our world of Britain was changing quite dramatically, very dramatically. And Peter's greatest love of of Cornwall was changing massively. And so were places like Cumbria. And so were places like Cymru, where any, any rich upland landscapes were now at that point no longer being used. Okay. What was that? Shh. We're saying something. <laughs> is, that, is that you, Mary, Margaret? <laughs> yes. Sorry, carry on. <laughs> oh, I could have done with a break then. But a change of 30 centimetres per century disguises the more dramatic way in which these events unfolded. This figure comes into perspective when you remember that the tidal range in a big spring tide at, at Scilly is around six metres, rise and fall of six metres. During a winter storm, waves coming across the Atlantic sometimes break over the top of Bishop's Rock, which is the Western Islands that you can actually see there. Bishop's Rock Lighthouse, some 50 meters high. So that's, those are quite high tides. So you can imagine if there are low landscapes, those low landscapes would have become easily flooded in the past. The changes to separate island from island have not always been the result of a steady trickle of rising water. Some will have been dramatic, cataclysmic events. So you can imagine me and Pete living in a nice little village between St. Mary's Island and Thresco, and everything's fine. We've had a wonderful summer. 
We've harvested our crops. Everything's fine. And there's a great storm and our homes are washed away and all our rich ground is washed away and we can never plant there again and we've got to move somewhere else. That's as dramatic as we're talking about, as dramatic as I'm just describing. In other words, it's like fearing the yearly tsunami or the seven bore that some of you guys will know about between um, in the Bristol Channel, it's a seven bore. It's a quite a tra um, traumatic and dramatic rise and fall of water. But that's 15, 16 meters in height. This is 50 meters, not 15, 50 meters. 15 is quite bloody tall. That's, a tall, that's the height of a house. Mm. So this continues to happen today. It used to be reckoned that there were 146 islands in the archipelago. Where, where an island is defined as a body of land separate at high tide and able to support vegetation of some kind. So that's classed as an island. A few winters ago, 146, a few winters ago, this became 147. When a severe storm broke through a thin land bridge at Rushy Bay and Briar. So you've got Briar, the second island there, and Thresco, and converted a peninsula into an island. I don't think I've got a plan of that. This is this is what we're talking about. So a new islands are being created. So 146, and then now you've got 147. You look at some places as you walk around and wonder how long they will remain attached or lost forever. Now, this isn't really happening at mainland Cornwall because Cornwall itself is a big rock of granite. And if we if we sort of go back to these images again, oh, I'm enjoying this today. It's great. Mm. It's nice. It's nice. I, I like submerged landscapes. Look, look at that wall, sort of going down there. Do you know what I'm thinking? I, I, I thought this today, right? You know, a Silly Islands trip, that would be good. But I'm told that you don't go by boat to the Silly Islands. No. It, it's, it's all, the, the swell between the Silly Islands is quite <laughs> traumatic. I, I'm talking about waves submerging whole vessels, and then you come back up again. No way. So you'd have to fly out there on some uh, Dakota tra um, planes or a Bramazon or something, you know? Helicopters they do, don't they? They do yeah. helicopters and little aeroplanes. Yeah. We, we, we can see you sweet talking, uh, Gilbert, to get over there. <laughs> do we know anybody who's seven foot tall? We could go over on their shoulders. Andy, Andy. <laughs> No, 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 it's not, no, 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 no. We're talking no, about know. going around the islands, not between. I know, I know. Yeah, that, that's the bit tall. Just being it? silly. Oh, Just being silly. it's okay to be silly, you witch. <laughs> it's fine. They're reopening the uh, the heliport in Penzance, which will take helicopter trips from Penzance out to the island. Yeah. Uh, I've been out there by boat on, on three occasions. Was it bad, Pete? No. When no. I went, it was terrible. Ah, yeah, you go. Flat bottom boat. Everybody being ill. <laughs> what? Yeah. Well, yes, what? I know. They got the tins alongside every seat. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I've never been sick, but there we are. Yeah, yeah. but you're, you're a sailor boy, aren't you? You're, you don't well. expect to get sick. <laughs> when I... When you're talking about the waves coming over, if you quite often see pictures of the uh, the waves breaking over the town hall clock in Port Leven, which is wow. just uh, the the first landmass from Scillies, and wow. their outcrops of granite. When I when I went, I had to get the airplane out because the sea was so rough the boat couldn't go. Well, the, the thing is, if it. it it, it would be, do you, do you know, do you know, I'm, I'm trying to really be positive today. I'm, I'm just trying to say, <laughs> let's have a trip to the Silly Islands, right? Yeah. But, but maybe yeah. we'll, maybe we'll wait a year. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, we, we can't, we can't do it next year. Anyway, we've got, we've got a trip, we got York and Chester. So there you go. So from a fictional point of view, these kinds of gradual changes to the land itself offer a new storytelling dimension. Margaret, yeah. authors have explored, and I hope will continue to explore, sudden changes 
And gradual change has not, I think, been used nearly so often. But when, when, when we think about this, you think about the green and pleasant land and suddenly that green and pleasant land being lost. And um, I, I love this nice little narrative that one minute you've got an island, you've got 46 islands and the next minute you've got 48. Oh, <laughs> uh, this could be a good quiz question, isn't it? How many islands are, uh, have the silly islands got now? 46, no, wrong, 48. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know that 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 would be some that would be some great quiz. It really would. Anyway, let let's. I I love these images now, and I'm just gonna just gonna double check. Oh, we're going we're gonna go somewhere now that somebody told me to look at. Right now, don't shout out what it is, Pete. Right, but I think I, I'm I'm just gonna see how many images away. So what we've got we've got. Hang on. I can't just double check in. Oh, there it is. I've just spoiled it. Spoiled the surprise. So, so what? What we, I, what we've got. I, I, I love, I love this little plan. It's, it's a little map here, um, and I like little maps like this. To be honest, with you, it's really difficult to get good maps of the Sea Islands. Um, and one little island that we're going to look at towards the end is is Norna Island. And the problem is, when I was doing my research on Norna Island, which, which is over in the East Isle Islands there, I, I couldn't really find any information about it. I kept on coming up with the uh, Easter Island. I clicked on one image and I thought, oh, that looks familiar. That's because it's the back of a Moa statue. That's not on the uh, Norna <laughs> Island. I think there's a place called Norna on Easter Island. So really difficult to look at some of this stuff. And so we look at Norna Island and... Where are we going to go next? Right. So, I'm just gonna just gonna look at my notes to remind me where we're going to go next. Ah, yes, we're going to go to Saint Helen's Island next, and there she is, Saint Helen's Island. So, I did, what what we should do is just go over the map again, actually, just sort of so we could sort of acquaint ourselves where we are. So there's Briar that was associated, attached to um, Fresco, one island, 900 years ago. So we're going to go to um, a, no a non -er island. So obviously we've got St. Mary's here, St. Martin's, which I do think I mentioned a couple of times. And we're going to go to St. Helen's Island next. Now, Peter, what is St. Helen's Island known for? And you've got to get this right because you told me to look this up. Well, it has a, a, a pest house where any infected persons were put into the house on a remote island and uh, they were left there yes. to either live or die. <laughs> yes. Infectious diseases were put onto that particular island, yeah. It's quite... When I was reading this, I thought this would be a nice story. I think... This is one of Peter's stories. There's an isolation hospital and maybe only one or two people die, which is really tragic in itself. But this this island is an island of death because quite a few people. Yeah. Uh, well, 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 we'll read in the circumstance now. So I, I just 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 get to that, please. And so we can come back. Sometimes I'm thinking maybe in advance. Send you a map of these places. But look at that there, you're thinking of all these being linked together at one stage. Mm -hmm. a, a nine foot, okay, if you've got a 50 foot tall person, you could walk the whole thing. <laughs> and if so you look at Samson Island, there are two hillocks and they're known for fertility. And that people would, would go there, hopefully to raise their fertility. Mm. There it is. Roger, mm. you're in with some luck yet. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's right. There is two illics, Matt. He, he is yeah. very, very right. You know, when I, um, when, when, when we looked at this earlier on today, I, I'm not sure where it was. Somebody says, you know, we, we, I showed like a mound and they says that can't be the Silly Islands. The Silly Islands are completely flat. Mm. And when wow. you look at that, 132 metres up, you know that that's not flat and um hang on a minute let's just sort of clear that let's see, just sort of that's 120 there on briar um where else have we got a, a few 160 there saint martin's 
140. So mm -hmm. there's a bit of a while before. Um, so if there if there's 30 centimeters a, um, every hundred years, Samson Island that's going to be there for a little while yet. I think. I think it is. I don't think we're going to lose it all yet. <clears throat> so let let's carry on. Let's carry on. Let's carry on. Pete, better not say anything else. I don't want to go back to this map. Oh, that's what I was going to say. East. Oh, ooh, I nearly said Easter Island. <laughs> so the silly island themselves. I, I I looked at this and I thought all these little hedges. And when we were doing it this morning, Mike Mike oh. actually gave a name to the the the, the trees that the, the the bush that actually grows to give these hedges. And it's not an indigenous plant either. And um, lots of books. The County Archaeologies, Cornwall and the Silly Islands. Look at that, a small unroofed building erected in 1764 as an isolation hospital. The hospital has single story granite walls. It must have been built by a Cornishman. <laughs> Surviving to roof height and a brick chimney it had a square main room and an annex later subdivided. So that's the annex in the forefront. None of the rooms interconnect, obviously, because of the isolation reasons. Um, and there's a blocked window between the two smaller ones. So I think there must have been an access chute. So between that on the annex and this here. So I've got a little bit more information about this, actually, which which is what you pay me to do. So the pest house. Now, I didn't want to go into massive detail, but I think this detail is enough actually. The pest house, P-E-S-T house. I thought Pete was joking about the spelling when he mentioned this last week, but he was right. St. Helen's Isolation Hospital, also known as the pest house. You could probably understand why it's called the pest house really. Was a quarantine station built in 1764 to house plague cases from visiting ships calling at Old Grimsby and St. Helen's Pool. So they're calling in there and they basically <laughs> ships had to be quarantined. And people, I, I, I'm thinking it's only a small building, so it can't really accommodate many people. It was constructed after an act of parliament in 1754 to decree that any plague-ridden ship north of Cape Finist heading for England should anchor off this island. Finister, um, Finister, 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 that's it, Finist, Finister. The station included the building of an isolation hospital as well as a ship way to get access directly from their boats and an extensive quay to serve it. The pest house was still open to receive patients from quarantined vessels. The hospital building is a rectangular roofless building today, seven meters by 5.5 meters externally, with a two roomed extension on its east side. The walls of the building are over half a meter thick and the walls stand over three meters in height and they're constructed of mortared rubble with other detail picked out in larger stones. The building has recently been repaired and stabilized to prevent its uh, collapse with the help of English heritage. And there is also a graveyard. This is why I said there's a number of people. There's also a graveyard associated with a pest house, which is known to include the grave of a 27 year old naval surgeon this is quite tragic, who was sent to treat the sick and died himself from plague within a few weeks. So in other words, he was doing his best and he died as well. So I think that's a little bit of a tragic story. Various, various passengers from Africa, and Asia, who also died at this station. So a bit of a tragedy there, but it was really interesting to be offered um, this this wonderful site by Pete. It sort of it broke my prehistoric research on the island, and I, I appreciated that actually. But you know what? We do mention the Romans. We do, <laughs> um, and I would like to mention that there's lots of 
saints associated with the Isles of Scilly. You can see St. Martin, St. Alan, St. Mary. There you go. And there's also on the south side of this island of St. Palin's, there's an early Christian complex dating to around the 700s or probably the 600s associated with a Saint Elid or Liddy or Elid. And so basically this looks at a few little buildings, which I can tell you a little bit about. I don't actually show you anything about that, but what it says, it, say, it says about Saint Elidis Hermitage, a site that's been archaeologically excavated. They have found one building initially and then the hermitage extended to having a church and various other buildings and rectangular rectangular cells. And they found five graves. And this was this was associated with Tavistock Abbey in the 1120s and was probably abolished um, at the time of the Reformation in the 1540s. So a nice bit of early Christianity there. We couldn't do a part of Cornwall without a bit of early Christianity. I wanted to do that. So what I'd like to do now, just show you a couple of images. And we come on to 8.30 actually. It's a great shame that Andy hasn't seen this tonight and, and it would have been nice to have had him with us, but, mm. and, and Gilbert and, and um, Claire and everybody else. So I'm just, and Sandra actually. So I'll just show you some couple of more images of St. Helens and there's our isolation hospital. There's St. Helens again. And it's, it looks rather bleak. It almost looks like a caldera, doesn't it? Like, um, like, like there was once a volcano in the middle and it blew its top and there's these little bits of islands. No, nothing like that at all. But it sort of reminds me of something like that. So 10,000 years ago, it was a huge island, big island, really big island. Only connected to the land. So there it is. And when we're looking at that, they look massive blocks. And I said, yeah, that's the building stone. That's some of the building stone of this wonderful landscape. Building's quite lost amongst those big boulders, actually. Oh, we've moved into prehistory, so we're going to have to stop now. So where we're going to go next, we're going to, we're not going to look at the island of Norna next, which this image has got to do with Norna. I've just got a little bit of a potted history, which I'd like to read to you. And I think I'll put the maps back in there because it mentions St. Mary's and it mentions St. Martin's and Tresco. So probably, probably not have any archaeological images on there if I can get. So that's what we'll do. So when we have little questions, I know Pete's going to go, go back to that map. So <laughs> go back to that map. Pete, Pete any <laughs> questions? No, no, you're doing quite well at that moment, like I said. Thanks, Pete. <laughs> Thanks, Pete. Margaret. Well, my son actually went over in, in August and he went on a boat there and back and there was barely a ripple. Uh, but he said the islands are just full of prehistoric sites and Bronze Age, mm. loads of stuff. It's really heavily concentrated with a lot of archaeological sites. And I just wonder why it's so concentrated around there. There seems to be a lot more there than there is uh, on the mainland. Two answers, Orkney. And mm. the, other, the other answer is, is because, because Orkney and the Scilly Islands are not densely populated, there's lots of prehistoric that's stuff right. that's left to their own devices. That, yeah. That's basically, that's the, that's, yeah. that's the answer. It's and a I, lot more visible. Mm. They haven't been damaged and built over. That's true. Yeah. That's the third yeah. answer. That's it. Exactly. I bet there are loads and of spoiled. shipwrecks, aren't there? There's and a lot spoiled. of shipwrecks. If you did this, yeah. if you did this, just looking at shipwrecks, you'd come up with lots of shipwrecks. Yeah. Mm. There's one shipwreck that we mentioned, and that's it. But there are lots of shipwrecks, yeah. And I think it's interesting that you showed us how the islands were formed by the sea rising, and and then sunk again you know the, i suppose the low ones you you gained islands and then lost some i thought that was an interesting process um 
it, it's more that um, land is being breached, and that's creating the yes. yeah, island. Yeah. yeah, that that yeah, mm. that that's that's the that's the subtext. Yeah, yeah. Roger yeah. baby. No, nothing particular. Very interesting. I, I, I'm, glad, I'm glad you think it's interesting, Rog. That makes my day. Um, no, no, as Pete said, you've covered a lot, and it's a lot of news to me. I don't know very much at all. I didn't. It, it, it is. It is. I could have just taken one island today, and you may have been a oh, bit... Oh, yes. You may <laughs> no. have been, well, where is this? Um, yeah. So, yes. no, baby, had, baby, baby. I had the same question as Margaret. Do you think the mainland was as, as populated as that? Say say that again. Do you think the mainland was as populated as that? Um, yes, it was. The when we look at Cornwall, for example, the one thing I say about Cornwall, I like to link Cornwall, Cymru, Cumbria as all as one, and actually Orkney, because they're three areas that are similar. All of those three areas, four areas, I would say, used to have much bigger populations. Mm -hmm. So if you want to look at Orkney, the population of Orkney is about twenty-one thousand. Now, probably about 150, 200 years ago, it was more like 40,000. Cornwall, Cornwall was densely pop populated more in the past than it is today. Cumbria was probably the same. Silly Islands. Uh, Cumbria is a bit of a weird one, actually, because our population is, is more now than it was in the past. But upland areas in Cumbria are very similar to places like Silly Islands and Cornwall, there are upland areas in Cumbria were a lot more populated in the past than they are today. That that's basically the analogy I like to make. So Jeannie, Jeannie, Jeannie. No questions. No, it's fascinating. It is. So so what we're gonna do, I'm gonna I'm gonna cut, I'm not gonna have the mic on in the break. So you can talk any any crap that you want to talk. <laughs> we don't talk crap. Oh, really? Never. How dare you? Oh, How very dare you. That's he saying that. Oh. <laughs> One thing I will say, I'm definitely going back over there at some point. Fine. Well, you, you, can, you, can, you can take Jessica and Chris with you and we'll have a great, great little trip. Sounded they wouldn't want to go by boat. That's their trouble. Sounds uh, like a threat, Pete. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I, I, I tell you what, no matter how much I threatened, I, actually, I did say to Pete one day I was coming over for Christmas, and then strangely enough, he said he's going to Scotland. I don't know why he said that. <laughs> oh, I wonder. <laughs> Do you know, um, I, 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 I had a, I had a joke, and it, 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 this is really in bad taste, right? But um, if if they had, if they had COVID. 39 there would have been no second world war mm. because nobody would have wanted to invade another country that was <laughs> that that was really in bad taste i know i'm sorry but that that's one of mine yeah, yeah, yeah. so all right, right then. all right let's have a break for a very short time and i'll, I'll just cut the mic a little bit okay okie dokie okay. see you later yeah. we're not going to be long 10 minutes only enough time right, yes, just, oh, three. right we're going to share screen on now so basically, we, we've got what I'm going to do now is is a major overview of the archaeology of the city islands, which I didn't want to do at the beginning because we've got a lot of questions that have been asked, which is OK. So Salonian archaeology, if you, know, if you want to look this up, Salonian archaeology, archaeological evidence suggests human presence in the island going back thousands and thousands of years, at least 6,000 years. And we do believe that the island was densely populated. And this, this covering, you know, up into the upland areas of Fresco and St. Mary's today, it's, it's thought that Mesolithic period, we don't know when, probably at least at the time that the um, Scilly Islands were actually connected to the mainland Britain, eking out um, an, a, a rigorous, diverse <laughs> existence using the flint that they may have collected off from the beaches. These are the Mesolithic hunter-gatherers. And over time, gradually in the Neolithic period, um, 6,000 years ago into the Bronze Age, 4,000 years ago, we've got all those trees being cleared. Now, what mm -hmm. we do see is, is, is chambered khans, entrance graves, you could call them, 
around the island, lots of these giving you a transition between the Neolithic and the Bronze Age, a rich history on the island of Nona, which we're going to look at, which is on the screen in the Eastern Isles, which I pointed out earlier on. We, we're going to be looking at some buildings, some houses, some circular Iron Age houses. And at that point, we've got some really intriguing finds. And, and there's lots and lots of chambered cairns that we could look at. There's one called the Knackerboy Chambered Khan. Wonderful site. We've got middens from various periods. We've got standing stones, the old man of Gur, and the statue men here of Chapel Down on the island of St. Martin. Still looking at the plan so you know where these places are. So what we've got is wonderful pottery and various other evidence being found at the site of Nono. Mm. And we've got evidence possibly of some kind of conflict in regards to Shipman Head. If you can find Shipman Head on, um, hang on, Chip, Shipman Head, that's on, if I go back, I can show you, but don't rush me. <laughs> Shipman's Head, there it is, Bryn Hare, there it is, Shipman's Head. So that gives you a good idea. And so we're looking at a, um, a defended site there. So we got the idea of conflict with the island. At the island of uh, Bryn Hare, there again, we've got kiss burials. There's a kiss burial um, associated <coughs> with about 2000 years BC. A wonderful decorated bronze mirror, one of the oldest bronze mirrors ever found in Britain, has been found at the Bryn Hare Kist. And we've got evidence of from the Roman period as well. Wow. Now that's at um, Thresco that Bill was talking about in the break, <clears throat> but uh, that was to do with some gardens there. So going into the Roman period, we've got lots of lots and lots of evidence. Roman pottery, brooches, lots of evidence being found across this, this island chain, which is a bit more diverse than you would find on another island chain like Orkney, but there's lots of Roman evidence on Orkney. Coins have been found from an early period in on the islands of um, the Scilly Islands from the six um, the year 60 odd 69. AD in regards to Vespasian all the way to Gratian into 383. So we got some nice coins being found, more coins being found associated with um, the 200s rather than before or after. So we've got we've got clay figurines being found, which come from Gaul, which date from around the 100s. So we find lots of really interesting archaeology and to the island of Samson, not Samson, but the island of Samson. Samson. No, Samson, yes, Samson, Samson of Dole and that type of thing. From there, we've got really nice early Christian evidence from the four, late 400s to the 500s. So that's really nice. We've got lots of pottery, grass mark pottery, which is a, a local type of pottery that we'll find. So we're finding all this wonderful evidence across this island chain. Ah, oh, a bit of an overview. Do you know what? I would love a cup of tea, but my wonderful Michelle isn't around to make me one. If she was, I would say she was one of the most wonderful women in the world, but she can't hear me. <laughs> you know she can hear me, can't you? So <laughs> she's got me some nice Christmas presents, but then again, I've got her some nice Christmas presents as well. I haven't gone along the underwear um, route this year because they never fit her. They only fit me. So... <laughs> we won't go there thank you very much I, I don't think i should have gone there isn't no, that please. right michelle <laughs> she actually said yes <laughs> so what we're going to do we're going to go to the island of nona so just sort of show you where nona is again for those that have not not don't know and and again of all these places i've mentioned today and any other research you want to do you're going to really um, you're going to really struggle with no no but if you do actually get any more information on no no it, it's absolutely fantastic so what i've got to tell you about no no is a nice bit and then we expand mm. and to be honest with you if i did a bit of archaeology on all 148 islands it, i think we would be uh, 
for quite some time. So you can understand why I've just done a little bit of information. So no, no there, and let's go to my wonderful text. So moving over to all these other islands and, oh, look at these weird buildings. Look at these wonderful buildings. And oh, I just want to double check on something. Oh, I'm showing you some nice secrets. Oh, I got away with that, didn't I? Maybe. Treasure, treasure. <laughs> treasure. This is proper treasure. Roman treasure. Ooh, <laughs> I, I wonder what, I, I wonder what a, a pirate Roman would have been like. <laughs> Biggest dinosaur. So anyway, so you got so you got a deserted island. This little article from 2018, the tiny uninhabited island of Nona, which is basically lots of these islands are uninhabited. Probably about 100 of the 148 islands are uninhabited, but they're full of archaeology in the eastern islands of the Scilly Islands. Now. It lies to the southeast of St. Martin's, 400 metres offshore. The name Nonar comes from the Cornish Arnor, which means facing the mainland, Arnor, A-R-N-O-R, which in this case refers to St. Martin's. And, and if, any, if any of you know anything about islands, you always refer to the big island as the mainland. When in fact it's not the main. When you go to Orkney, you go to the islands of Hoy and Rousey, and it always refers to the mainland. And it's not actually referring to Scotland, it's actually referring to the big island. So when you go to the Scilly Islands and somebody says, oh, I've got to go back to the mainland, they actually mean mainland Scilly Islands. That, that's a bit of a clue. And you can really get on well with locals then. Big fact you need to know. It is a single hill, it's now a hill, a um, single island, really. It's four acres and it's got some, um, it, it, it is connected to Great Ganili by a rocky tombo that is covered at high tide. I've heard of, never heard of the tombo. Mm. So it's got a little bit of a connection there, but only at high tide. So it's a proper island because it's surrounded. At, um, sad again. Oh. Is it connected to, I think that should be um, low tide actually, oh, anyway, whatever this text is, Tombolo is, is, a, is a stretch connecting two islands. So that should have said at um, low water, there's a connection, high tide, there's no connection. That's known as a Tombolo when it's connected to another spit of land. So prehistoric Nono, um, most of the eastern islands have signs of prehistoric settlement to one degree or another. However, Nona was never considered to be particularly special until one stormy night in 1962, a combination, combination of gale force winds from the southwest and high seas caused the southern aspect of the island to be battered ferociously and a huge amount of erosion happened literally overnight. The erosion revealed a number of dwellings that had never been seen in modern towns. Closer inspection showed them to be Iron Age huts, similar to those at Halangi Down Iron Age Village. Look it up, Halangi Down, H-A-L-A-N-G-Y. Halangi Down Iron Age Village. Like any stone-built Iron Age village that you would find in, across Cumbria, Cumbria and Cornwall, and the same with Orkney as well. Round buildings like this, very typical form, three or four meters in diameter, no more than that, walls of about half a meter thick. Height of the walls would have probably no, been no more than about a, a meter in height. And obviously the rest of the building thatch and so on. Mm -hmm. So early excavations at Nonar, so this would have been in 1962, were basically archeologists saw that something was eroding. There's a lot of archeology. span We need to get in there rapidly to recover what we can. So this is the tragedy with islands that you've got to do archaeological excavation because things are being revealed and you've got to get in there before the next gale comes in there and tosses everything away. Another storm of a similar nature was coming, so they had to really excavate there. And so the archaeology <coughs> that you're seeing now is protected by a protective bank. 
that allows people to actually study it a little bit more. So they only excavated two huts about out of a number of huts that are there um, that were dated to the pre-Roman Iron Age. So 300 years before the birth of Christ, something like that. But the buildings seemingly went into the Roman period. So finds show that they had been abandoned and then reoccupied during the Roman period. So 100, 200 years when Rome is fully erect in Britain, you've got this great intercourse between the Scilly Islands and Cornwall. And they're, they're, it's said that from the evidence that we find in the Scilly Islands, the Scilly Islands is being used as a great religious sort of retreat for people. Thank you very much for this, Michelle. And usually for Scilly, there were many, many Roman finds. In fact, for this island of Nona, lots of Roman finds were actually find, found. And, and these were in one building. Um, so here we go, quickly became clear that these were not simply lost artifacts of the sort usually found in a dwelling. There were a large stash of these finds in a building. So let, let's let's have a look at a, a gilt brooch from Nona from this wonderful settlement. Let's let's have a little look at that. Let's look at look at that building. It it looks like something that Pete. Did you go on the um, Anglesey trip? Yeah. You can remember buildings like this on Anglesey. Yes. Yeah, we saw those. Yeah. And you remember buildings looking like this at a Khan Bray, and you'd get these at um, Haligi and um, Chow, um, Chowchester. Yeah. Yeah, but see, one of the things with these, this type of building with this rock, it's granite rock and it's so very difficult to shape. They've obviously used what was laying about. And it's quite a skill to, to build this, <coughs> picking out the stones of the shape necessary to, uh, to, build, to build a wall. Exactly, and obviously packing <laughs> on the Interlocking stones, interlocking yeah. stones. Exactly. Packing on the outside then, and you've got a wonderful insulated building. Yeah. That's what we're talking about. And they, you can actually see it there. So yeah. obviously there's a buildup around there, but you, you can think of that being sort of insulated buildings from the Iron Age. Yeah. You can compare this with any sort of buildings in a prehistoric period. If you want to look for something like Scarabray from Orkney, thousands of years earlier, the same type of thing is approached. And these, these are the ones actually on the, the... So I think what we've got, we've got... The beach is really close there. You've got um, a, a water barrier. And I think this this is maybe what they may have been seeing being revealed back in the 60s, actually. So they had to do something about it. But look at that there, gilt brooch. And brooch after brooch, coin, all these wonderful artifacts. Look at that there. Isn't that an absolutely beautiful object? But... If we move on a little bit. Oh, cup. Don't want to do that yet. Look at that. Whoa, fantastic. So let's, as you can see, maybe what with all the with all the seminars that we've been doing over the past few months, I'm I'm thinking that we we'll probably visit lots of these places again. But we'll say, right, you've we've already been to the Silly Islands. You know what's going on. Let's look at this bit of archaeology. And there's a few sites that I have deliberately not mentioned today to keep that in my little armory in the future. So the number of Roman finds was so high, so, 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 so high that it was originally assumed that the site must have been a workshop for manufacturing jewelry or, or had a Roman occupational bent. However, the date range of the finds and their nature showed that this was highly unlikely to be the explanation. So what's going on? Can't answer that. They found, wait for it, in, in this building and probably spread over the two buildings, in these two buildings, three brooches. Oh, no, I got that wrong. 300 brooches. I've actually got that wrong as well. 3,000 Roman brooches. And you start to think that is a lot of brooches. 35 bronze rings, typical Roman type of bronze ring. 11 bracelets, 24 glass beads. I heard you, some of you talking about Venetian glass beads earlier on from the 1600s. Glass beads were massive also in the Roman period. And 84 Roman coins spread over these two huts. And I think there was more of a concentration in one than the other. But that's all together. If we want to do the quick maths there, that's 
around 3,200 metallic finds. The variance in quality of the brooches was significant too. Most were fairly standard, but some were extremely of high quality and high standard. So, oh, let, let's let's look at that one. So I think that gilt one's absolutely wonderful um, involving a brooch, a cloak brooch. All of these are associated with cloak brooches. You've got um, a nice bit of enamel on the end. These are, these are all enamel as well, different designs. More of the excavation here and look at the sand. Um, and you've got some really nice stone objects there as well. Oh, uh, I tell you what, this is, I'm just ch check. Oh, look at that. Isn't, isn't that fantastic? Let's sort of zoom in a little bit even more there. Let's really, let's really, let's love this piece. Look at that. I tell you what, the detail in there. Do you know, I wanted to look a little bit more detail on this. I just thought, again, this could be an individual talk. Enamel brooches from Nomar. Some of the finds from Nomar, Nomar have become famous across the world for the quality and beauty. I probably maybe flipped over this in a book somewhere. I can't remember seeing it, but I wouldn't have associated it with the Sicily Islands at all. Um, enamel, Morning. wonderful enamel brooches. A circular one here, normal shape brooches and so on. This a large circular brooch described with alternating enamel panels of red and white around the circumference. There it is. Each panel has an intricate pattern within it. Each individual designs. Around it are eight circular enamel enclosures. So the, 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 enamels, the enamels underneath the enclosure, so it gives some color. I'm really, we're really struggling with the stone there, actually, what they were. And in the center is a circular blue enclosure. And, and again, I think that's going to be sort of blue glass from somewhere. I, I, I really needed to look a little bit more detail on this, but I, I thought this was an absolutely fantastic, find. <coughs> fantastic find. Um, and what they also found as well was a sword with a decorated scabbard. It's not giving me an idea of date on that. The detail on the bron bronze of the hilt is so clear that the individual strands of the leather wrapping of the handle can be clearly seen. Wow, wow. The scabbard itself has bands of red, blue and white enamel. I'm thinking that that's probably Roman actually, uh, being that what we've got here. And also I did look this up and I just thought, no, I'm not gonna see, see an image of this. I wanna leave something. If you type in the Silly Islands, sea leopard, um, a sea leopard brooch, fantastic. And a sea leopard brooch is very similar to some designs which can be found in the mosaics, uh, mosaic of Fishbourne Roman Palace. And by the way, there is talk about doing a trip to Fishbourne Roman Palace as well in the future. It has the head of a leopard with a long spotty body, a large fin tail, and a number of individual fins on its back and body. Look that up, folks. Look it up, mark my words. So the collection of finds from that one island, from that one site is amazing. Viewing in the museum on St. Mary's, the island of St. Mary, oh, mainland St. Mary's, correct myself. So the current explanation for the presence of so many finds is that, is that. Is that, which is, is basically, maybe these buildings were actually converted into a shrine. A shrine because it, it, it's on the Easter Islands. It's sort of there on that side. It's one of the first islands you're gonna find when you get to the Silly Chain. It's sort of in that sort of um, gulf between the, the big islands and it, it's, it's there. And you're thinking that would be the first island you come to. So Roman traders stopped on their journeys between mainland Europe and Western England, an island to leave an offering to the god goddess for their safety. They, they, there weren't little um, sailors along the coast, not sailors, little witches along the coast selling knots to sailors. So this is the next best thing. Mm. Uh, 1,900 years ago, they go into this site. Um, they're taking an offering. That's all they've got. That, that's, that's all we've got. So further excavations... In time, we're looking at further excavation being undertaken there. They've, they've obviously got the, on the island, another side of the island, they've got a stone chambered grave as well that they found, similar to one we're gonna look at, but obviously this is being eroded away. 
So lots of finds, they've got to go out there and sort of understand a little bit more about the island. So again, folks, we're not doing any more about that, but there's, there's a lot more. But what I'd like to do, Nona's very own wreck. So actually a lot of this, a lot of this this evening was was based on everyone that takes part, and Andy would have liked like this next bit because we've got a bit of a wreck coming up. But this is recorded, so they're they're not going to miss out. So, again, love that fine, beautiful, beautiful. A bit of a wreck. Oh, show on the other side. So a bit of a wreck. There. So we're, we're thinking actually, what is that? If you zoom in on there, you can actually see. It looks like some kind of uh, boiler room and you can see the rivets there and this is a wreck so i want mm -hmm. to do a do a wreck you can't do the silly islands without a wreck folks so known as very own wreck and i'm sure each island's got its own wreck like each island's got its own bit of prehistory it's called the wreckage from the ps earl of aran in 1872, the passenger ship Earl of Aran attempted to take a shortcut through the Eastern Isles on the, um, on the uh, um, advice of its unlicensed pilot. So the unlicensed pilot thought it's a good, island, good idea to go sort of, you know, you know into the, the low shores. It ran aground on, on Irishman's Ledge and was never recovered. Fragments of the wreck are still visible on the western side of Nona, nearly 150 years on. So you are able to visit the island if anyone wants to get out there. It is possible to visit the island as part of a guided tour with the island's resident historian, Catherine Sawyer. You have to transfer from the passenger boat to a small dinghy and then land on the beach. On a personal note, I can recommend it um, highly enough. So basically, but you do get your feet wet. So recommendation from the author of this, this article. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to give myself a little bit of room a minute. Um, we're going to delete um, that there. And so what we're going to do now is We've got one, we've got two other sites to visit, actually, two other sites, completely different in periods of time. So change my images again. So we've gone from that and we are back on the islands of Scilly. And we're, we're looking at, an, we, there's two, there's, there's the St. Mary's Island of Scilly. So this, this is the larger of the islands. If, um, Tresco was um, linked to Brehead today. That would probably be a very big island, but it's not. So St. Mary's Island, we're going to go to next. There's the locality. There's two, um, there's two graves. You could call them pseudo passage chambered graves from the Neolithic period. So 6,000 years ago or thereabout. This is a site known as In Inisgan. Inisgan. Oh, it's a good pronunciation, in Nisgen. And there's one, but we go to that. Nice, doesn't that look good? So these these back in the day would have been, that water there was land. So you'd have looked up from the agricultural land. There's there's our chamber, there's our ancestral chamber. That That's where we take the bones of our loved ones. Or if you're seeing this as something else, that could be where we put take votive offerings, or that could be where our ancestors live, and there's no bones. There's lots of different ways of interpreting this type of site. So if we go back to this again, let's see what my notes tell me. Drum roll. Inisgan. Now, this one is known as Lower Inisgan. There's two, there's two of these, these wonderful graves with a capstone, partially, partially the capstone, but this, this, the upper is in this one is, is, is quite amazing. But you can see this, this grave is more damaged than the upper grave and has only two of its original capstones. Parts of the surrounding curb of the mound remain. We can see, if we, if we go with, if, this is what this is now today, is if we go with what this other one looks like, which is the upper, we're looking at the lower one, 
If I go with the description, you can get a better idea of what it would have looked like. So the entrance grave consists of a circular mound of earth. This is what this would have looked like. And rubble, um, nearly seven meters in diameter, two, just under two meters in height. Inside the mound is a central chamber, 5.4 meters in length by just under one and a half meters wide. And it would have been quite narrow getting down there, only one meter in height. So the entrance to the chamber is on the south side of the mound and faces north. The walls of the burial chamber are lined with coarse rubble, a bit like the buildings in the Iron Age, actually. There is a large stone position at the northern end of the chamber and large slabs edge the central and northern parts of the eastern wall. Two capstones provide a roof to the central and southern parts of the chamber where there would have been more Unauthorized excavation in 1950, the chamber was emptied of its existing earth and rubble and probably damaged what you're seeing today. So whoever dug there 70 years ago destroyed the monument. However, the upper Inizgan site, which is the one you're actually seeing now. So let's just sort of, so the one that we've just, this is the, um, that's the lower site. This is the upper site. So what they're, what they're saying is it's, it's likely that in the forefront there's some kind of passageway leading into the chamber. And we do actually see other evidence at other sites that we haven't done today, which we might do again. So <clears throat> upper in Isgen, the giant's grave is on a hill. This is where that seven foot tall giant lived. Sorry about that, Margaret. You shouldn't have said anything. The entrance gave consists of a slightly oblong mound of earth and rubble measuring nine by eight meters with nearly two meters in height inside the mound. Uh, surrounded curve is approximately one meter high. So it's a platform within the platform. There are remnants of a, an, another outer platform. Again, the graves upper surface is composed of turf the mound covers an intact burial chamber with an entrance at the eastern side of the mound. And the entrance is covered by a large stone slab. I tried to find one, an image inside, but I couldn't find it. The rectangular chamber is 4.6 meters long and the width is 1.5, so it's a rectangular chamber and you couldn't stand up inside. It's, it's 1.2 meters in height. So you've got a little bit of a passageway and then you've got a chamber. Um, some of the passageway is now gone. Um, and the western north end of the chamber is blocked by a large edge set slab. So it was sort of in and out ones, but now it's no longer that way. Five large slabs would have, would have created the roof. And the roof slabs are slightly exposed in the grassy surface of the mound. So there would have been five slabs. That's what the lower one would have had. And that would have supported the roof. So a little bit of prehistory from the Neolithic, bit of, bit of a chamber there. And then finally, I think this would have been perfect for John. He would have been moaning and said, well, there's no Romans tonight. I wasn't really interested. And just as he's about to go, I would say, we're doing the Romans. And there it is. And so that, that's the final image of this, <coughs> this grave, Neolithic grave, looking out over these other islands and you would have been able to walk across there at one stage and look at that there and this is to be found on Tresco the other museum in the gardens that Bill mentioned earlier on the tropical gardens and that carving there is Roman actually these two things on the top are not Roman but that's Roman and there's a little bit of a story about that, and then we'll call it a day. And that, that'll be enough for the year. <clears throat> so I'm just going to um, hang on a minute. One set. So I'm just going to, do you know what, right? Just on the last image, I, I seem to have lost my notes. So what I'm going to do, the, the, the magic of the internet is to type in, you can actually find lots of information on this. Just type in Tresco Roman stone. I got a little bit of information in front of me. Roman altar at um, Tresco garden sculptured stone. 
just only a little bit of information, but it's, it's useful. So this Roman altar with carvings, you can just about see some of the carvings on it. The two things on the top are fairly modern, but that, that thing in the middle in Tresco Gardens was actually originally found at St. Mary's. And it was found at the garrison site at St. Mary's. So it's come from the other island, St. Mary's. The description is a Roman altar, which was found on the garrison on St. Mary's in the 1860s. This is now at the western end of the Long Walk at the Kitchen Gardens at Tresco. The altar, which has had a stone slab and bowl cemented to the top of it since its discovery, has side panels with carvings depicting a cleaver and a long handled axe. The absence of a dedication on the front panel suggests that it is unfinished. So it may be from a Roman shipwreck or discarded ballast from a Roman ship. And on that note, do you know what? We've hardly done the Romans at all these past months, but the Romans have their last say. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put you all back with it. And uh, let's find out if there's any questions. Pete, anything from you, darling? No questions. I've, I've got a little story to tell you about Wolf Rock Lighthouse. Please do. Oh, by the way, before you give us a story, let's find out where Wolf Rock is. Yep. This is, is a map. So where <laughs> where is Wolf Rock? If I it's get on the, the Western Isles, to, just out of, past the Western Isles. All right, we're going to get all the other images up. So we're going to... You want the other map? I do want the other map. I really do. So if we go... up oh, there it is. Do you know what? I really like... Hang on, where is it? I really like this one. So Western Islands, where, where are we, Pete? <laughs> Bishop's Rock, there it is. Look. Bishop's Rock Lighthouse, that's it. Well, that's a bit isolated, isn't it? It is. And uh, a friend Benny of mine... God. was a maintenance man for Trinity House Lighthouses and he was on Bishop's Rock. They'd been carrying out some maintenance and he was sat in the kitchen with the other lighthouse keepers and they were sat there and there was a knock, knock, knock on the door and they were sat having a cup of tea and they looked at each other and said, oh, you're taking the mix. And each one said, no, it's not me, it's not me, it's not me. And then he answered the door and it was a Frenchman who'd been sailing from uh, France to Ireland, and he was coming past Bishop's Rock, so he pulled in, tied up, and came in, knocked the door, and came in for a cup of tea. <laughs> <laughs> That's a true story, that is. I don't think you could even make that up, to be honest. Right. No. Um, <laughs> no yeah, okay. I, 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 I can't. Yeah, well, that's just odd. Um, well, yeah, that's just odd, yeah. See, I, I, I must... I must go back out there because oh, yeah. I never saw any of this archaeology when yeah. I went out there. So I'm going to go out there at some point yeah. and hopefully see some of it for myself. Yeah. Can, yeah. I, can, I, can I just ask, Peter, you know, you know, we've visited lots of places in Cornwall that you haven't seen. Is it because yeah. you, your interest in history and archaeology has increased over the years or was it you were too... It busy? has certainly increased, yes. Okay. Right, um, since, but since getting interested in flat home and then sadly meeting you. Oh. <laughs> you oh. know, we, we, we saw a photo, me and, didn't we, Michelle? There was a photograph the other day that we found and you were in it. It was an old one. Oh. oh. You, 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 look young, you look younger then, Pete. No, oh. he was with me. Anyway, so um, what about you, Anne? Anything, darling? No, no. Interesting as always. I have enjoyed it again. Thank you. Uh, did you know what? Everyone loves somebody like you. We could do, we could do something <laughs> like you every week. So uh, what about you, um, Drenna? Drenna? Oh. That me? Yes. <laughs> yeah. That's you, darling, yeah? No, I've enjoyed it. Thank you very much. I'm going to kiss Polly. <laughs> Is it that side? Yeah. Anyway, go, go the other way. There you go. Um, Margaret. I just wonder if there's been a lot of underwater archaeology done in those shallow waters around there. Massively. Southampton Archaeology with their underwater um, archaeological unit, yes, all the time. It'd be a fascinating place to go to. Oh, yeah. So, much, so yeah. much 
E that hasn't been built on. It's very rare, isn't it? It's a bit like yes. Orkneys. They like Sorry. the Orkneys, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, oh, Annie, got it. You must organise a trip at some point. Definitely. All right, then. Yes. We're, we're, we're hearing you. R Rods the Dodge. No, yes. Very no, good. no questions. Fine. Lovely. Thanks. Very good. You ground for me, so it's good. Davy Baby. Very good. Thank you very much. Thank you for the year. Uh, yes. And and, and it's great to actually have you back. To be honest with you, it's been great. Can I Thank can you. I just can I just ask you something? It, it, this is um, why did you suddenly um, get back involved again? I can't remember. Well, I I didn't I didn't uh, take up this uh, Zoom and stuff in the first couple of months. And, and I got to be honest with you, I'm so pleased that you've joined us and Thank you. you know, you're, you're not, you're not isolated anymore. And that's the main thing. Yes. Well, well done you. Well done you. And um, well, actually well done Margaret and Drina as well, because we were all bugging you. Uh, we were, we were phoning the wrong house and writing letters to the wrong place for a start, but that was something else. Oh, I can't wait to go back to the arenas. <laughs> <laughs> and me. Um, Trina. Uh, you miss, you're just missing their cakes, aren't you? Yeah, uh, that's, right. yeah, that's, that's the one. Oh, Adrina. <laughs> Dr Drini, Beanie, anything from you? And thanks for that, uh, David. Anything from you, Drina? You have asked me and I've said, yes, it was wonderful. Thank you. Uh, Thank all, you. Uh, all right, then. I'm not going to, um, I'm not going to play my trumpet. <laughs> but you know this will be played to um, the, the large group on a, on a, this this will this will go out Thursday morning, and this will also go out on Thursday afternoon. So, uh, okay, good. You know, they 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 will hear, they will know some of your faces, and uh, they will say, "Who's that weird one with, with the bald head?" <laughs> and they're not talking about you, Drina. Right. <laughs> so, on on that note, um, on behalf of Archaeology Cymru, I, I uh, thank you for supporting us this year. Yes. And enjoy the lecture. pleasure. It's, yeah, it's our pleasure as well uh, to have served you this year and to serve you next year as well. And you'll love, you also love the lecture next week. It, it's me and, well, basically what we've done is a Zoom YouTube recording and you, you, you see us going through the, the thing of using new technology and you'll, you'll, uh, I understand what you guys went through when we were trying it today. So, uh, oh, yeah. You'll see I'm that. Never setting up. Via Skype. Yeah. That was a bloody nightmare, Rog. You're not doing oh, that again. God. <laughs> Until we got there. Eventually, yeah, we got there and we stopped using it. Went to Zoom. What a. I know. <laughs> Great. Yes, it's much better. You're oh, right. Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. It's worked out well. It, it's worked okay, out well. Okay, folks. But, okay, folks. What all I'm going to say, all if the there's best. nothing else, all the best. I'm going to say, yeah. Merry yeah. Christmas. Soon. The Donald Clow and the Lloyd the New York. The Donald Clow and the Lloyd the New Drina, David, Anne, and Peter. Nostachi. Um, the Dalek now and Abloy the Thank you for your support. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Bye. Yeah. Bye. 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 Cheers. Take care. Bye. 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 Roger was the first one going. He was the, one yeah. of the first ones in class went to go. There we are. I'm always the last one. Give my love to give my love to the 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 the, the, the raunchous lady, and we will. Uh, I will see do. I'll I'll deliver her, her a newsletter tomorrow and that the bench sheet. Yeah, I thought. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that'd be great. That'd be great. I'll deliver that to her tomorrow. Right. So, um, yeah. Sa Sandra's going to find herself really isolated over the next few months. So we're going to have to think about that one. Well, yeah, yeah. We have to see. As soon as she can, I'll bring her down again. And any 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 chance you could appease appease your um, children by one of you wearing a face mask? Mm -hmm. If one of you wore a face mask, then that that would that would be some protection. Well, yes, okay. Not I've you... got one like that, similar to that. Yeah. Which is a complete seal, and everything is filtered both in and out. Yeah, I, I'm 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 fine with washable filters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. I, I'm, I'm thinking that that would be a solution. You, yeah. Not, mm. not both of you, but one of you. Well, yeah, fair enough. Yeah. Mm. And as long as you sort of, I, I just as long as you use the hand gel, it's fine. Well, that's right. And we're we're, we're over two meters apart anyway. When well, when, you, when she sat here. You got the two meters apart. That's tick. Yeah. Just 
have your own hand wash and then just yep. one of you wear a mask and that'd be fine. Yeah. Mm. So. Yeah, there we are. Okay. Okay then, Pete. I'm gonna let you. Right then. Yeah. Let me I'll see you see soon. You in a new year. See, see you in a new year, year. Pete. Yeah. Bye. See you Merry Christmas. Thanks for watching on YouTube. And if any of you have ever used YouTube before, there's lots of videos on here. Always like and subscribe. It's it's always um, very useful to do that. And if any of you don't already know, I'm live at the drill hall in Chepstow. You can you can also book that. There's the website address, carljameslankford.com. And I'd like to also mention to all of you who will be watching this on Christmas week, which is this week, we've, we've got the pre-recorded other lecture that was also done today, which will be going out um, the following week on, on the Thursday, and for everybody will be starting back on the Thursdays on the 7th of January as normal, so you've got this pre -re this recorded live and you've got the following week you've also got on the thursday the other pre recorded lecture so anyone anyone else finally if anyone wants to join join my youtube channel there's the join button down below and subscribe and that'd be great anyway finally thanks everybody for their support this year it's been really really powerful it's meant that we can go on to 2000 and 2021 and you will have all received this which is with your newsletter basically lots of events going on so we've got some nice events going on in January to Lamblevian and UNE and we will be live streaming that directly onto Zoom and so there's two of us on that. So if you can't make it, there'll be two members of staff on that recording. And we introduce Jessica, who we're taking on board to start working with us in New Year. And she'll be doing Beyond Superstition, Blood and Guts, Prehistory to Early Modern Medicine on a Thursday evening. So I've got one more Thursday evening to teach in a new year, which will be the 7th. And then she takes over on the 14th of January with eight sessions. Really she knows her stuff and it would be great if you support her on that so get back to us anyways carl james thank you finally again really appreciate your support and let's go onwards and upwards 2021 let's be positive keep social distancing keep being safe and let's not be sorry thank you very much stop recording